Hey everybody, Sean Tierney here from theautomationblog.com. And in today's episode of the Automation Podcast, we're going to do something a little different. We're actually going to take a look at a new product. Now, you may have heard of Rockwell's 1784 U2 DHP. And that's a USB to Data Highway Plus cable that Rockwell sells to allow you to jump on the Data Highway Plus network. And here you can see I have a PLC 520, I have a Control Logics rack, and I have a 504, all connected together on Data Highway Plus. And um, I don't have, what I don't have is one of those U2 DHPs because they're so expensive. Last time I checked, they were over two grand. And, um, you know, it's they work, they work well, but they're just kind of unwieldy. So um, recently I was contacted by the good folks at Automation Networks, and they said, would you be willing to try our model? So let's take a look at what their uh, their unit looks like here. We'll go to their webpage, and this is uh, automation-networks.com, and here you can see their unit. Let's go ahead and uh, click on it. It's a, uh, let's see here, you can see the list price. It's like half the price of the Rockwell one, and they got here a, a configuration uh, information here on how to set up RS links. Let's see if we can pull up the page. That's their page on the Allen Bradley cable. And that's what the Allen Bradley cable looks like. But we want to find out more about what they're calling their ANC 120E. So let's click on that. And let's scroll down here. What do they say? Let's take a look. It says it's compatible with all PLC programming and HMI SCADA packages, including all old versions of RS Links Classic. RS Links Enterprise and RS Logix 5500. Well, that's good. Um, it says it's easy to set up. It's priced at half the price of the U2 DHP. It uh, looks like it's 12 megabyte uh, megabit USB speed. Um, it functions like a control Logix, allowing Ethernet to Data Highway Plus uh, capabilities. Okay. Um, down here, it's reliable. That's important if you're using it for SCADA. It needs to work 24-7. Auto board detect, that's good. And auto polarity detection. Well, you know, that's quite important because I can't count how many times I've seen people wire their Data Highway Plus backwards. Instead of being clear, shield, blue, they go blue, shield, clear. So that's good. That's a nice feature to have. Um, it says USB stick with no power requirements. Uh, let's see here. No external power supply and easy to connect up two pin Phoenix Bluehost connector or direct eight pin mini DIN uh, cable. Okay. And then a 30 day free trial and lifetime warranty replacement. That all sounds good. So they got a lot of documentation down here too. So we may need to come back to this page, maybe to grab a driver or to grab some of these how to's, but Let's first try to use it without any of that. Let's see how we do. So we'll come over to the device and let's take a look at it here on the uh, top down camera. Here can we see it's automation networks. It's an ANC 120E and we can see some other information about it. And uh, I think with that, let's just go ahead and open it here. I got a screwdriver handy. Just slice it open and see what comes in the box. Let's see here. Okay, packaging. And now, looks like we got a quick start guide here. That's good. Wow, nice and big. All right, we'll put that one side for now. All right, we got a cable. Oh, a nice long cable too. This, this is looking like it's six feet or maybe even longer. Um, yeah, this is looking like 10 feet actually. So that's good. So let's see, what is this? This has a uh, two pin connector on one side and an A pin mini DIN on the other. So let me see if I can hold those up to the camera so you can get a good shot of those. Okay. That's what they look like. So this then goes into the PLC5 or 504 and that must go into the ANC 120E. So let's put that one aside. And then we have a static bag here. 
see if there's any places to tear this. Nope. Yeah, right here. Nope. nope. All right. I may have to get the scissors out. <laughs> a lot of times they'll give you a little spot, a little nick in it to cut it. But that's okay. We will uh, get a pair of dikes here and cut her open. All right. There we go. Let me move this out of the way here. And uh, let me hold this up to the camera so you can see it. So there it says Automation Networks. You can see it has a USB connector and a little itty bit. It's all black. It's hard to see. There we go. And a little two pin connector there. That does look like there's something on, on the side here. Like it could be a power jack, but this says it doesn't require it. So don't know what that is. And it looks like a, a couple of these little bumps here are LEDs. Interesting. And maybe that's a reset pinhole. Hard to tell. Hard to tell without reading the directions. We're just guessing here. All right. So felt something else in there. Okay. All right. Well, this looks like this is the connector. Apparently this goes into the side of the adapter. So, so hard to see when things are all black. Okay. So I'm assuming that goes in like that. All right. Interesting. Okay. So with that said, instead of trying to wire up that little adapter right now, I think the best thing to do would be to plug things together using the 8-pin mini den. Get that in there. Let's put the tools out of the way. I don't want to lose that little guy. All right, so I'm going to take a break and plug this in and be right back. Okay, because my computer is off the stage, I went and grabbed a USB extension cable so we could try this out and still see the device here. So you can see I have one of the lights blinking, the light that's on the uh, PLC5 side here. And then if we look at the software, we saw come up that the driver software was not installed correctly. So if we go to Device Manager here, let's see what we can see. It knows what it is, but it has an error here. It doesn't have the software. Let's see if these instructions will give us any help here. Okay. Yes, one side of this uh, page tells us how to install the driver for this unit. So they have us go to Device Manager, just like I did. And then they say to go to update driver software, browse my computer for driver software. Let me pick. Then they has, have us go down the network connections. Network adapters. And they want us to choose remote NDIS compatible device, which is a Microsoft Corp. All right. Okay, so far so good. Next, say yes to the warning. We'll give it a moment to install. And now we should see it under Device Manager when it is complete. And there it is. All right, so far so good. The next step appears to be, because it emulates an Ethernet device, we gotta give it a uh, static IP address. So let's go ahead and do that. So we'll go to Network Connections, okay. Go to Properties, TCP IP, and we'll give it a static address. Yep, 
and we'll use the one they recommend. 192, 168, 137.1, 255, 255, 250, and that's it. All right. It doesn't really matter to me because it's like an Ethernet USB stick. So now we can go into the web browser and uh, look at its configuration. So let's try that. I already have a web browser open here. Okay, now it's telling me that I want to go to the address plus one here. I want to go to 192.168.137.2. Two. I don't know why. It says the default user is admin. And the password is password. Oh, yeah, we logged in. Okay. Excellent. So let's go on to setting up RS links. All right, here. Go to configure drivers, remote devices via links gateway and give it that secondary address, the dot two address. All right, let's do it. So RS links, here it is. You can see my setup right here with my PLC five, my slick 504, my DHRL card. And now I got this new device here. This 77 has to be this guy right here. Let's, let's take a look here. See if anywhere in there. Yep. Node 63, which is you know, an octal would be 77, I would imagine. So uh, I guess that makes sense. Um, so let's go back to RS links. We'll go to communications, configure drivers, and let's go remote devices via links gateway. Default name there. Uh, server IP host name. I didn't even see that there. Oh yeah, that's what we just put in. They put in 192.168.137.2. Hit OK. Well, let's see what happens. You know, I think we got to open up this guy here because this is emulating a Control Logics rack. So we'll open up the emulated DHRIO and yeah, we see our PLC5, our Slick 500. And let's see if we can browse the uh, Control Logics backplane. Hmm, I guess not. All right. Well, that's okay. We really want to get to our DH Plus devices. So now, let's see if I can go online with the 504 first. Uh, we won't go through the AB Ethernet, we will go through the TCP one. Okay, channel A, 504, online. Well, that was pretty quick. Seems to be updating fairly quickly too. Um, yeah, if we look at this timer, it's coming in quickly. Um, you know, maybe a little bit faster than going through the Control Logics chassis. I don't know. We would have to open up a second copy of RS Logics to find out. Let's do that. Let's see here. What am I using? I'm using. I come 504 demo. Yeah, work with a copy. Com system comms. And we will this time go back through the Control Logic Gateway here. And let's see what we got. Go online. Well, maybe they're they're both the same speed, which wouldn't surprise me. I can't tell the difference. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I, I, I can definitely see it. So uh, it looks like it's working there. And um, let's uh, maximize this again. 
And just to make sure we're connected to the, uh, the right one here, I'm going to close them both and I'll open it up again. And we'll go file, open, com, system comms, make sure we're going through the TCP IP one, which is the automation networks device here. We'll drill down like we did last time, go online. And you know what, let's try an online edit just to make sure it works as advertised. And uh, gee whiz, we'll need some addresses here. Let's look for some unused addresses. Well, that one's not used. And let's go look for some outputs. That one's not used. All right. Let's go ahead and accept. And we will test. And we will assemble. Everything seemed to work. Let's see if I force that on and enable forces. Nope. Did output 8 come on? Well, you tell me. I can't see from here. So I'm hoping it's on. And that's on uh, slot 3. So, um, yeah, it seems to work. Let's try it with the PLC5 now. Uh, let's see here. Here's my RS Logics 5. We'll go to com, system comms. We'll uh, go through the TCP1. Okay, browse, 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 PLC5, online. Give it a second here. Okay, I'm online with the PLC5. Um, let's try an online edit again. So, um, you know, and just to make sure, just to prove I'm not going through the control logics, I'm going to disconnect the Ethernet from the control logics. All right, so let's do this. Let's insert a wrong. So I see OTE. Well, let's go look for some unused inputs. Usage. The whole word is used there. I don't think I have anything in slot one, two, three. Three is, this isn't used, good. This guy right here. We'll use him and then we'll go to outputs. Go to, we we're still in usage, good. 012. Okay. It's that guy right there. Go ahead and accept. Test. And assemble. All right. So that worked as well. So um, I'll just go ahead and force this on. <laughs> And enable all forces here. And we should see, probably too small to see on those 1771 modules, but we should see that light had just come on. All right, so, so far, looked pretty simple. The out-of-box experience on this guy is great. This one, this one page told me everything I needed to know to set it up in Windows 7. I, I saw on their website they had a Windows 10 driver. Um, and then on this side, it told me everything I needed to know to set up RS Links Classic, which is, um, which is pretty cool. And I'm running through, uh, Data Highway Plus, I'm talking to a 504 and I'm talking to a PLC5 simultaneously. I'm not seeing any lag. I'm not seeing any issues, any timeouts. Again, we've been using it for all of what, five minutes here. So, um, but so far so good. So now what I'm going to do now is... I'm going to see if I can figure out how to wire up this little guy and we will connect it to our blue hose. And uh, so uh, I'll uh, pause the video and come back after I get this wired together. Okay, after playing with this connector for a little while, um, I can tell you don't pull this clear piece too high up or push it all the way in because it's hard to get it back in the right position. But uh, because it does not matter um, which side you put the blue and the clear in because it does auto detection. Um, all you really have to do is strip your wires back some, right? And then stick them into the connector like so. Okay. 
and then push down hard on that end. And let's see if they're in there tight now. Well, they feel real tight. I can't pull it out. Okay, so now let's see what happens when we um, disconnect that side and connect this side. Well, the lights come back on, so that's good. So let's go back to RS Links and see what we see in there. All right, here I am back in RS Links, and we will go ahead and click on the Data Highway Plus Channel A underneath the TCP uh, TCP One driver, and it looks like it is communicating. Let's see if uh, we can go back online. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This one is already going offline, so let's see if we can go back online. Okay, well, the RS Logix 500 does its thing. We'll try to go back online with RS Logix 5. All right, well, it seems like everything's working. Um, just the connector was a little tricky to plug together, but once you get the hang of it, it's actually quite easy. And I like other connectors of similar type out there in the field. But um, I would have to say, you know, the unit's small. So, you, you know, for $1,000, you want to make sure you don't lose it. But if it ever does break, they have free replacement. And it just seems super easy to set up. I mean, you watched me do it. I really, just with the... The one page of instructions would get it up and running. So, um, you know, it's it's definitely an option. It's an option. It's definitely, uh, uh, you know, a much cheaper way to get on Data Highway Plus. Um, I'd be a little concerned about losing it, um, you know, being that it's so expensive. Um, but besides that, I mean, it gives you a great option here, the pigtail option or the, you know, the mini DIN option. And... Um, you know, that's cool. I wonder if you could buy more of these connectors and leave them in uh, different panels around the uh, around the plant. But with that, I have to give it a thumbs up. It was easy to set up. The instructions were absolutely right. The only thing I struggled with was the, the connector there, but it only took a few minutes to get that working. And, um, you know, if you guys aren't prone to losing something, then this is definitely an alternative to the Allen Bradley cable that you should consider. And that's it for this edition of the Automation Podcast. Now, if you enjoy episodes like this where I actually sit down and review products um, unscripted, <laughs> uh, let me know because uh, then I'll try to do more of them. And uh, if there's anything you'd like to see in future podcasts, you know, less formal, um, a little bit longer format than the Automation Minute, um, let me know. Send me a message, comment here on YouTube or comment on the website at theautomationpodcast.com. Those comments are actually tied to the automationforums.com, which I visit every day because that's where the comments for the automation blog go, the automation minute go, the automation podcast go. So it's a single place I can go to catch up with everybody. And with that, have a great week. And until next time, peace.